welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story from Cliftonville with me, Daniel. We're continuing our build a nation in Northern Ireland, and although we're still in the title race, we are just starting to lose control a little bit. As you can see, we've played two games more than Linfield, and that title race is back in their hands, following their good results against us in the last episode, and a couple more drop points where they were a little bit needless, we've managed to give Linfield the title chance again. We've got a main key player out injured as well, McMenamin with fractured ribs, and more importantly, unhappy and wanting to leave the club, so that's got to be considered shortly too. And we have got a tough Christmas period coming up. We play Glen Torren at home, who have had a poor start to the season, but have very good players on board, and as I'm recording this, I've seen their exploits in Europe in real life. Balamini United at home, our bogey side, you saw that in the first day of the season, and we'll get to more on that news in a minute. Coleraine who are having a good spell, they're back up in the top half now and then Lahn and Linfield away, the two sides directly below us and two of the three professional sides in this division. So we will be playing Glen Torren first and then our bogey side Balamina but there is positive news to come as well. So you can see we're back the day before match day and the reasons for that will become clear and we've also got good news financially because over the last month and in fact two months we've not been losing a great deal. And that's because our European money has tended to stick with us here. Looking at it moving forward, our wage bill is so low that it's not causing much of a problem there. We are over the wage budget, but we're sticking with it quite well. And if we can get a couple off the books that we're hoping to, I'm thinking in January we might even be able to start breaking even. We have had some disappointment in the cups and we have had some disappointments off the pitch. But on it, things are looking pretty good still. We have got one bit of news first though, so if you are looking forward to this episode, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. It really does make such a difference. I'm loving this new series and I hope you're enjoying it too. I realise it's a bit more niche, a little bit different, but I'm loving Northern Irish football. I mean, we've seen the exploits this summer with Coleraine in Europe. It's been absolutely fantastic to watch. And the Irish Cup final was brilliant as well on the BBC. So plenty to be excited about for Irish football. And in Northern Ireland, we're having the time of our life. If you want to make sure you stay up to date, please do subscribe down below. We've got daily FM20 content, weekly live streams and stadium review series too. As we head to our inbox for the first exciting bit of news of the day. And that is that we've just had our youth intake preview. So I was just skipping ahead to the next match and it caught my eye. So I thought we'd better stop here. There is one line in here that of course stands out. This is a terrific group of players coming through and has the potential to be a real golden generation for the club. Now, considering how much we've improved the average squad here, in terms of star ratings and the like, we've got people in who are 4 or 5 star, the Alex Bruces, the midfield three that we've brought in. And if we go and have a look at the squad, Toby Edser is now the best player at the club, someone who wasn't here last summer. Joe Gormley is still up there, Ben Anik, the goalkeeper. And if we've got players in a golden generation that are expected to be as good as those, that could sort out our backup squad later on down the line, even when we're looking for bigger, more professional players. So I'm really excited about that. We've got a top prospect in the centre of midfield. And given that that's where most of our loan players are, that's an incredible moment for us. We've got a couple of forwards who look fine prospects. A good Northern Irish striker from Belfast. And one of our wingers looks like a handy prospect. So I've got the understanding from that that defensively, the prospects aren't great. But we might have three or four very high potential forwards. So I'm looking forward to that one. And we'll find out in April if the talk there... From our head of youth development is worth it. If we have a look at Mark Smith, his judge of ability and potential is only 7 out of 20. So I don't want to get too excited, but it's hard not to when you see the golden generation words. It's the holy grail for FM, but we just need it to still be there when we get the intake in April. So hopefully that will be the case. It's a positive note to start on, but let's skip ahead to match day. We'll have a look at our recent results and then we'll head into our first of today's two games. Here we are then, ninth place Clentoran being faced today. I mentioned in the last episode part of the reason for this. Shannon Klukas, one of the central midfielders, a big help to us as a podcast. He did a great interview with us and it's been really popular. And it's led to us getting a few more from Northern Ireland as well. However, he is out injured for this game, so we won't be seeing him in action. But nonetheless, a good player who's been crucial to Glentoran. And I guess the fact that he's injured is part of the reason they're struggling. The same for Van Overbeek on the right who was so important in their Irish Cup win. And although he's not had the best season here, he's one of the few players in their side that would definitely improve our first 11. The right wing's an area we're struggling, so we're hoping that as a big club, they'll be able to get up there soon as well. 
because they're one of the few who probably have the facilities here to go professional in the next few years. And as we try to build the nation, it's not just about us, don't forget. It's about the whole division and other clubs getting into Europe, doing well and turning professional too. So if we go and have a look at our recent results quickly, you can see we've just started to drop off a little bit. We had the two games against Linfield, which were poor. We played well, but we just had a little mental block against them. We bounced back in the Premiership and that was a 5-2 win at Warren Point. Gormley with a brace, Stewart with a brace and McMenamin with a goal. Followed by a 5-3 extra time win against lower league opposition in the Bet McLean Cup. The quarter final was won by Chris Curran and Joe Gormley in extra time. After Ryan Curran and a McCrudden brace had got us there to start with. It was our backup team though, so let's not get too worried. A 0-0 draw at Crusaders. Struggling this season, but still a professional side. Not the worst result in the world. And then the bogey team struck again. A 3-2 defeat at home to Balamini United in the Shield semi-final. We played our first team. We looked okay, but we couldn't bounce back. McCrudden and Edson with our two goals. But that formation, that tactic, it just beats us. We got the lucky 5-1 win away from home, where I said I don't know how we managed it. But a defeat at the Oval in the semi-final there, combined with the home defeat on the first day of the season, I think they're going to be the bogey side of the series, if I'm being honest. We did bounce back with back-to-back 3-1 -back wins, firstly at home to Carrick Rangers, Shotton, Stewart and McMenamin with the goals, and then at home to Dungannon, it was McCrudden, Edsa and Gormley. A red card helped us out there at 2-1, just made the end a bit more comfortable. And Dungannon, a side we managed in a head coach in FM19, Daniel Hughes was our star back then, and he got a goal against us in that one too. So a really good player, a former Cliftonville man as well, and he got a goal against his former club. Then we went out of another cup, the semi-final of the Bet McLean Cup. And unfortunately, we lost to Linfield in extra time. A really good game, an even match, two sides that were really fighting hard, but they just got the better of us. Andy Waterworth, the experienced centre forward, he got his goal. A poacher's finish, an impact sub in extra time, and we just couldn't find a way back in it. And we followed that up at the weekend, unfortunately, with a few tired legs, a few reserve players in. And a few more drop points. A 0-0 draw at Glenarvan. And that put Linfield back in charge of the title race. We come into this one confident though. A 5-0 win against Institute at home. Shotton, a Gormley brace, Edsa and Ryan Curran. Made sure it was a comfortable win. And kept us five points clear with two extra games played. So Linfield have to win at bottom side Carrick Rangers today. And we have to beat Glen Torren at home. A poor season but a good side on paper. So I'm a little bit worried about this one. We are favourites with the media. Of course, we would be given our performances this season. And our first 11, I think, is fully fit in terms of fatigue. McCrudden has overtaken McMenamin, partly because of the injury and partly because of McMenamin's unhappiness. Our seven subs are the only outfield players who are fit. And this is the 11 we've gone for. It's Anik in goal. McDermott and Ives the fullbacks with Shotton and Bruce at centre-half. Curran on the right-hand side. McCrudden as the inside forward on the left. Edsa and Storey in central midfield. And then Gormley and Stewart continuing up front. Both of them scoring plenty this season. We've got a couple of players leaving the club soon. A couple more we're trying to get rid of. But for now, this is the 11 we've got. So let's get into the game against Gentoran and see if we can pick up a crucial three points. Because against our bogey side Balamina next time, I'm not sure we'll be so fortunate. 4-2-3-1 for Glen Torren. Rory Donnelly playing off the right, surprisingly. Plum in the middle, we've got Nasseri in the number 10, who's obviously gone to Linfield in real life. And the experienced hero, Elliot Morris, on the bench. McDade's there as well, so they've got game changers if they need them. But we want the lads to pick up where they left off. And we've got to take advantage of them missing both Klukas and Van Overbeek, because that's two key players out of the side. As they pick it up on the left with Ives. Into Stewart, the target man. It's been a positive start for us here. And in the first minute, we're coming forward with Edsa. He's got two up with him. Goes left to Ives. Overlapping from left back. Free in the middle. Bought down for a penalty. McCrudden's the best taker. I think he is going to have to take it. And we've got a great chance to go ahead here in just the second minute of the match. Michael McCrudden steps up. Playing off the left-hand side. The inside forward. He is saved. Oh, it was an easy height and an easy angle for the keeper. And you've got to worry what that will do to the confidence for the rest of this match. We've got a corner on the left with Edsa. And we really need to put that behind us quick as the corner's away. Falls for Alex Bruce. The experienced centre-half has signed another year deal. 
He's taken the same money as well. We've had a couple of those who have signed deals this week. And he's gone to Rory Donnelly on the right. Crossed into the middle of the box. McDermott with a challenge. And he's going to fall into the middle. But a missed penalty starts the game. And it's still nil-nil with six minutes gone. And we've got a throw on the right-hand side with Connor McDermott. Back to Gormley. McDermott again. And this has been a really positive start despite the missed pen as McDermott crosses again. Blocked to Story, and now Ed's at a playmaker. Had a really good season so far and gets it wide to McCrudden. His cross is blocked and he looks shot of confidence to be honest. And a long ball forward finds the target man. Back to Ply in the middle, out to the right. And Ives heads away and we're really in control of this match. But until we score the goal, I don't think the floodgates are going to open I'm afraid. It's Ives. Back inside to Shotton. Really good possession football. I hope the one thing you can see is how much we're improving, how much more fluent we are. As Curran crosses, headed away to McCrudden. He's got to the second ball on the left-hand side. Crosses towards the back post. Chris Curran heads in, and it is his second goal of the season. McCrudden assists. Hopefully that will wipe away any of the concerns from the missed penalty. The confidence is back, and with nine minutes gone, it is Cliftonville 1, Glentoran 0. Although Glentoran have a free kick on the right. To the back post to Rory Donnelly. And with their first chance of the match they've scored. Linfield are already 3-0 up at Carrick Rangers. And as it stands, our frailty from set pieces has cost us. It's 1-1 and we don't deserve that. As Edza puts the ball into the box. Bruce there. Oh, he's tipped onto the bar. Hoof behind for a corner. What a game of football this is. We're only 15 minutes in. And it's going to be crossed by Toby Edza again. To the back post towards Stewart. Headed away as far as Story, And are we finally going to get a breather in this match? Story keeps the ball. Crosses in. Gormley's there. Oh, it was one of those. No one got on the end of it. The cross comes shot. And I thought the keeper would be fooled. But he does really well in the end. And it remains 1-1 with a quarter gone. And it's a throw in on the right-hand side for the away side again. They've not had much of a say in this game. But when they had, they've done well. We've nicked it on the left here for Stewart. Through ball towards Gormley, one-on-one. -on -one, normally so reliable. And oh, he's put it wide. He beat the keeper. And I think you could tell I thought it was going in. But it wasn't to be. It's still 1-1. One -one, and we can't keep missing these chances. A couple of the lads looking nervous now. We just need a goal to ease it again. As Ives picks it up at left back. Inside a shot on who goes long. Finds Gormley. Now Story. Man over on both wings. McCrudden flicks on. Gordon heads away and McCrudden has been poor since the penalty miss. He's back to Edser and now Shotton. Into Bruce. Switches to the right hand side to Curran, the goal scorer. Crosses early and it's straight at a keeper. Not the best delivery in the world to be truthful. And I don't know why this highlight is still continuing. It's a very long one and it's starting to be a bit of a concern. As it falls for Shotton at centre half from the goal kick. And it looks like it's going to be relentless Cliftonville pressure again. We're playing such good football. We look really in tune with each other. But we can't get those clinical boots on. And that's going to be what's missing here. The story switches right to Chris Curran. Early ball into Stewart. Down to McCrudden. And that will settle his confidence again. A 2-1 lead. And McCrudden's got his 15th for the season. And any fears from that penalty miss will surely now have gone. Cliftonville 2, Glentoran 1. And what a time to score it on the stroke of half time. Linfield still need 3-0 in their game. We're going to encourage the boys to try and keep this up in the second half. And hopefully we can get another goal and just relax towards the last half an hour. As we've got our bogey side last week, we'd like everyone to stay fully fit. And we're going to have to think about a different tactic against them. As Ives picks it up on the left. Chance to cross in, but goes back to Edsa. The playmaker picks it up to Ives again. Three in the middle. One's Gormley. Heads just over the bar. Good chance gone begging. Lan 3-0 up as well. And all of the title challengers are winning their games at the moment. The other two far more comfortably than us though. We've got a free kick on the left again with Edsa. In towards Stewart, headed down along the line. And he's headed away as far as Edsa again. Back to shot on the centre half, who's still up there. Finds Edsa. Shotton. Bought down by Donnelly. It's a free kick. Oh, I thought it was in the box. Rory Donnelly bought him down, the goal scorer. And it's Edsa taking a free kick on the line. Chance to score a special one. Into the back post and the Seri heads clear. And it looks like Glen Torren get away with it. Oh, he's giving it away to McCrudden on the edge. Falls for Stewart who taps in. But I think Gormley was offside before. A very bizarre sequence of play. But the key news is it remains 2-1 Cliftonville. With 10 gone in the second half. And it is all the home side at the moment. And Ives picks it up on the left again to McCrudden. 25 minutes left. Ives delivers towards the back post. Beats everyone and falls for Chris Curran. He crosses for Stewart and it's in for 3-1. 11 for the season for the target man. And now we can surely celebrate victory. 
I'm going to make a couple of changes because Story's had an average game. Bolger on for him. On the left-hand side, McCrudden's not been great despite the goal and assist. He's missed the penalty and he doesn't look confident. So Ryan Curran on as the wide target man. And hopefully that will give us more of an aerial threat from crosses. 20 remaining. One change to be made. And we can take either fullback off here. So I'm going to replace Ives with young Aaron Donnelly. And just see if we can get out the last 15 unscathed. Look at the Glentoran yellow card. Certainly like getting stuck in. And that's without Klukas on the pitch as well. Very strange to see as Kane picks it up on the left. Towards Nasseri. Kane again. Into the back post. Mitchell's there. It was an unmarked chance and he was offside in the end. But his chance goes straight at Anik. And it's another throw for Glenn Torin, who are throwing everything forward now. Shot and heads away as far as O'Connor. Falls for Kane. That's a great strike. And Ben Anik has had a howler there. His first for the club. Palmed it into his own net. Really should have dealt with it. And we have a minute and a half plus stoppages to go. We're just going to time waste and make sure we see this out. Because we're not often poor defensively. But it's 3-2 and we've conceded poorly there. So let's make sure we see it out. And with two minutes to go. Now six minutes stoppage time. We're going to try our very best. And there we go. We escape unscathed. It is a 3-2 victory for Cliftonville at Solitude. Glen Torren, unfortunate in the end, is they threw everything at us in a grandstand finish. But we stay five points clear with that crucial victory. And now we face our bogey side. We'll be back for Ballymena in seven days' time. And I'm not looking forward to this one. Here we go then. We're back to face the bogey team. It's Cliftonville v Ballymena. And there's key midweek news as well. Linfield played the first of their game in hand. That was at Colrain. And they won 4-3. It was a stunning game. But unfortunately, Linfield held on. So they stay in charge of the title race. Although second exceeds any expectations this year. So we've got to make sure we don't fall towards Larne and Ballymena. And that means we need to win these sorts of games. The attendance has dropped by about 2,000 for today. Which shows how many of the likes of Linfield and Glen Torren bring. But Ballymena are a good club as well. So we know they're going to be a tough challenge. David Jeffrey, the former Linfield man in charge. We know he's got quality as well. Look at his man management. Look at his mental stats. He is something special. So let's go and have a look at our lineup. We've got McDermott suspended at right back. Now normally, you'd be upset if one of your best players was missing. I think this might suit us. Because we're going to play our defensive fullbacks here. Foster is the worst backup in the team. However... As a fullback on the fend, I feel like he might be able to help us today. We're going to do the same with Ives and just have a flat back four and try and get our way out of this game unscathed. On the left hand side, we'll stick with McCrudden. We've still not got McMenamin in back and everyone else will remain unchanged. So it's just a change at right back. Foster in for the suspended McDermott. Richard Brush on the bench as a backup keeper. Let's get into the Balamina game and see if they're playing that awful formation again. They are. And we just can't cope with it. Three will score goals in a hat falls against us. Miller in the number 10 role is hard to deal with because we don't have that defensive midfielder. And I just don't know how to deal with it without completely changing our shape. And we shouldn't have to do that really. They're not getting great results against other teams. So what I'm going to do is just drop the fullbacks to defend. We're not going to try and overlap on either side. And we're just going to try and get the ball down to the wingers and get it in the box. Well, 35 minutes gone, and it's actually a boring nil-nil, which I'm delighted with. Although, Freel's in one-on-one, -on -one as I say that. First highlight of the match, Freel's in. What a recovery tackle. Alex Bruce rolling back the years there, and a second block as well. Brilliant experience defending. And now we've got a free kick with Edsa at the other end. Shot and heads in the other centre-half. And that's why a good defence is so solid. Alex Bruce with a brilliant challenge, a goal-saving challenge. And then shot on at the other end, a threat from set pieces heads in. And more importantly, Linfield are losing at Crusaders. So as it stands, we are back in charge of the title race. I'm not getting excited yet because we've fallen away against Ballymena before. And of course, Linfield have turned things round before. But as it stands, at half-time, things looking great. And we've got a corner with Toby Edsa. So the back post is headed away. Alex Bruce gets there. Not often a right winger, and he's been caught out there. But he keeps possession somehow, and he keeps it well. He finds Story. Out to Chris Curran on the right. Into Edsa. The playmaker doing really well. Finds McCrudden. His shot's blocked, and he's cleared away. And eventually, long downfield. But Shotton's there. Finds Ives, the left back, who hoofs forward. McCrudden flicks onto Stewart, the target man. Barely mentioned his name so far. It's out to Edsa on the left. Great ball in. Curran to Gormley. What a save. And Curran's one's blocked behind as well. But the second time he was offside. Gormley did everything right there. Kept it down. Found the corner. And it was fantastic goalkeeping to stop it going in. 
10 minutes gone in the second half. Alex Bruce picks up a yellow card. But crucially, it is still 1-0 Cliftonville. And it is still 1-0 to Crusaders against Linfield. And we've reached 15 minutes to go. And I think we have to make changes now. Because we've got some tired legs out there. So Ryan Curran will replace Chris Curran on the right. Stories on a booking. Bolger isn't much worse, so I'll get him on like for like. We want to be able to rat around and get challenges in. And we'll leave the last change for five more. Because the only real options are the front three. And we don't have any replacements for them on the bench. Five minutes to go then. And I'm going to make a pretty unprecedented change for our season. I am going to go. I just want to see what formation Valamina are playing now. So they've gone to a flat three up front. So actually changing to a holding midfielder doesn't really help us. Which is what I was planning to do to match up with their number 10. But if we get an extra man in the middle, it could help us out moving forward. So I'm going to take off oh, Joe Gormley, I think. No, Stuart. Stuart will come off. He'll be replaced by Billy Mitchell. Mitchell will go into central midfield. Is Boulder a holding player? He is naturally. So that's what we're going to do. Mitchell in the middle. Bolger in the holding role. Mitchell can become a central midfielder on attack, which is what he prefers. Bolger will be a ball-winning midfielder on defend. And we're just going to keep that steady back four and the one in front. We're also then going to put Gormley as the poacher on attack. We'll keep McCrudden as the inside forward. And we'll try and keep ourselves 1-0 up with five minutes remaining. The time-wasting tactics might follow, but Balamina have a corner. Into Irving, good save by Ben Anik. No mistakes in this game from him. And we need solid goalkeepers at this point. Irving always a threat and he did a good job there. But Anik got down to it quick. Owens clears long downfield. Balamina going all out here. Foster hacks away. Balls for Addis who goes long again. He's got into McCulloch. He crosses to Burns. Oh, Ives has given a penalty away. Such a silly push. There was no need for it. And he's picked up a yellow. I should have taken him off. Ives has given away the penalty. And now Jim Irving steps up. And it's into the top corner. It is 1-1 with two minutes remaining. And now the key thing for us is holding on for the point. If Linfield are losing still, it's not a bad result. Linfield are still losing 1-0. So we've got to hold on here. Three minutes of stoppage time to go. And again, the bogey side have struck. It is Cliftonville 1, Balamini United 1. Again, they were the better side. We're going to say we're disappointed. But I think in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't a terrible result. So there we go. Linfield did lose their game. Larn, in fact, won as well. So only seven points in that. And we don't let Balamina get back into this race. But it is just tightening up a bit at the top. So could become a three-horse race yet. Because I'm sure Larn will spend big in January as well. It's going to be a very interesting winter. We've got big games against Coleraine, against Larn, against Linfield. We're going to skip all of that and come back for the final games around the end of the January transfer window. I'd like to do a bit of business and obviously confirm all the outs as well. We'll try and get that wage bill a bit more under control. And we'll be back for either Crusaders or Dungannon. We've got a tough draw against Crusaders in the Irish Cup too. And of course, we'll have transfer deadline day as well. So if you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy this episode, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Let me know how excited I should be about that youth intake message and where you think we'll be after facing all of the big sides in the title race over the next month or so off camera. Of course, as we've mentioned, these seasons are always top heavy as the European qualifiers take up so much of the early season. And then we just sort of rattle through the domestic campaign. And hopefully we can stay in that title race as long as possible. If you haven't already, subscribe down below for daily FM20 content from this series and all of the others on the channel too. We've got weekly live streams as well and we'll be looking to increase that as we go forward to FM21. And I'm really enjoying this one at the moment. So I hope you are as well. I hope you're enjoying seeing something a bit different. And as I mentioned, we've got loads of Northern Irish content over on our podcast channel. We've got interviews with Shannon Klukas from Glentoran and a few other current and former pros as well. So a massive thanks for watching and your continued support with this series, this channel and the podcast too. And I hope to see you next time for Transfer Deadline Day and another big game in the Dansky Bank Premiership. <laughs>